My name is Hector Simpson. I'm the Director of Cultural Programs here at the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Community Center. I am very pleased to be able to present to you the Department of Cultural Programs. I, I have to admit, when, um, when I realized that we were going to have to do a presentation, I was somewhat petrified, and I thought, well, how, how can I convey the information that I need to without actually having to stand up and do it? And voila, let's do a video. So I contacted Wolfgang Busch, who is a longtime friend of the center, and asked him to put together, or help me put together, this kind of overview of the Department of Cultural Programs. Um, what you're going to see over the next few minutes are the people here at the center that are instrumental in planning and producing our monthly cultural programs. Um, we have people that have been with the center for 10 years. We have people that have been with the center for four months. But the common denominator amongst all of them is that they are passionate about the work that they do. Um, while I'm responsible for uh, the overall programming, I, I, I couldn't do it alone. It's a daunting task, and while um, it's something certainly that I love, I couldn't do it alone. The people that volunteer in cultural programs are people that um, they're truly committed to the institution, but they also, um, they're looking for something more than just your traditional volunteer experience, because this is really unpaid work for many people. Um, you, you don't put together programs in a committee meeting. You don't put them together with a couple of phone calls. Um, there are many people that spend you know, a good 10, 15, 20 hours a week working on a program. Um, and for me, that's truly inspirational because I, you know, I, I do this work because I love it, but I also you know, get compensated to, to do it. Um, these are people that um, do it because they truly love it and they love the experience they get from it and they love the contribution that they're able to make to their community. Let me introduce you to the committee chairs of the Cultural Programs Department and um, enjoy. My name is Daniel Whitman. I'm the volunteer coordinator at the center. I've been here since November of 2001, and uh, my primary focus is to match the volunteer needs that we have with the desire of uh, members of our community to serve the community. I try to find ways to uh, be sure that our volunteer base reflects the cultural diversity of our community and really integrate and incorporate that into the, the volunteer programs that we... About a year ago, I was uh, kind of coming out and very new to the community, and it took me about five months to walk into the center just to get a, a calendar of events. And a year later, I'm like running the center. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I, I bartend, I was on LCA committee, I worked the garden party. Um, I've done Dancing on the Beach. I mean, it's just an amazing place and it's just so much fun. And I, I am not just a volunteer, but I, I feel like very much part of the center as a, as a part of the family, actually. Hi, I'm Gary. I've been here for about six years, uh, hanging art and doing other carpentry projects. And uh, we have a lot of shows coming in that keep me busy with. My name is John Allam, and I'm in charge of the Center Dance Program here. We're offering ballet classes, salsa, tango, uh, belly dancing, and jazz. We'd love to have everybody come out. We also have an annual benefit that's in April called The Journey, and it's run by the Center and Peter Prison Productions, and we are exploring diversity, and we'd love to have anybody come out and enjoy our new dance classes for all the beginners. I've been with the Center for about 10 months. I came in doing the AIDS ride uh, as a phone caller, trying to get support for the ride which then rolled into um, co-chairing the volunteers for organizing the volunteers for the garden party this year. And now I'm a co-chair of the, uh, uh, the orientation committee, which is here at the center. And I was approached to join the orientation committee and kind of help out to create and make it a little bit bigger, bigger and more advanced. And I was um, excited by that because I think it's very important for the center to be involved in the community, not just the gay community, but the community as whole in Manhattan, and to have a place where people can feel safe to come in and learn what options they have as far as they need health advice or they're just looking to volunteer themselves, different organizations. And um, I've been doing that for about three months now, and I've met some of the most amazing people here at the center. And um, one of them is Hope, who's going to be a new volunteer. 
Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and um, she, uh, the people here who work here are just absolutely amazing, and they are constantly just they're selfless in a, in a sense and the volunteers just are so giving of their time and supportive and that vibe is something that just makes you want to be here all the time. I work a full-time job but I'm here three or four days out of the week and I don't mind. I enjoy being here and the, again the people I've met are just absolutely wonderful. My name is Mel Wolf and I run the second Tuesday program here at the uh, center. Um, the program has been in existence since 1985, and uh, I've headed it since 1987. The um, aim of the program is to bring a leadership of the gay, lesbian, transgendered, bisexual community uh, to the center uh, to uh, speak about our lives. We have had over 180 speakers, and we continue to um, make arrangements and, um, uh, and uh, bring new people uh, to the center each month. We get many solicitations throughout the year uh, for uh, emerging authors, uh, politicos, uh, others who want to address our community and know about the program. Um, we've been doing it a while, and um, they come to us now. That has been a change, and that I think is a mark of the success of the center. They know about us and want to appear. We have benefited very much from the center's publicity and public relations department. Our programs, since we have a different speaker each month, are very dependent upon publicity and letting the public know who's coming. So the advertisements in the gay press, the internet access, the centers, bulletins and flyers are vitally important to us. We invited mayor-elect David Dinkins to come to the center. It was his first time meeting the general public. And I understand that to this day, when the gay community issues come up, he says, well, they love me in the gay community. I went to the center, I had a great evening, and that was, and, uh, and uh, he still remembers it and talks about it. My name is John and I've been volunteering here since shortly after September 11th when I, I just felt the need to kind of find a concentrated means of getting closer to the community and the center's been a great way to do that. And I've been volunteering now since about Thanksgiving of last year, bringing in volunteers and uh, doing any number of odd jobs around here. It's a great place to be. Hi, I'm John Baez, and I'm the co-chair of OS Center, which is the LGBT Community Center's newest cultural program. And um, I um, actually first came to the center to volunteer uh, in late December, and I met with Dan Whitman, and he and I figured out that none of the existing programs that were already available at the center were going to be a match for me because I wanted to take on a much more proactive role. We all work in, in production across the events and um, kind of pick up for each other when we need to and um, you know the, the greater goal being to put on a to put on a great event. I've been working with off-center committee. Um, I am more interested in volunteering and I do a lot more both um, at the center and also connecting some of the volunteer groups outside um, to come to the center and help out with some of the center activities. And I think that's a big plus in terms of changing my interest and changing my focus in how I spend my time outside of you know professional environment. The community seems to be receptive to things that are not normally presented at the center. I mean, we, we strive at Off Center to be a little different. We strive to provide um, controversial issues, issues that are not dealt with, issues that may not be um, the norm. Um, and actually we're doing a really great event soon called uh, Drawing Closer, Queer Representations in the Comics, uh, which will deal with uh, representations uh, in comic book art um, about uh, gay and lesbians. From the entire committee, we want to thank the center for being there to not only help us organize Off Center, but to really foster it and uh, bring us to where we are today. So. For that, thank you very much. My name is Rich Wandel, and uh, I'm the uh, founding archivist and historian for the Center for the LGBT Community Center's National uh, History Archive. 
uh, here at uh, on 13th Street. Uh, we've been in existence. We started it in 1989, and we actually opened our doors in 1990. We get a wide variety of researchers, from the uh, person writing a book or thesis, uh, all the way to uh, high school uh, students who are just beginning to learn uh, who they are and who the history of the community is, and all are welcome here. We are certainly one of the uh, foremost uh, archives of this type in the nation and actually in the world, and uh, uh, we're open to everyone. We are a large proponent, an important uh, advocate for community-based history and for communities to keep history within their own hands. It's not uncommon for us to have visitors from around the world discovering the history of the community. And uh, a community's history helps greatly in terms of, uh, of pride and a sense of self. Uh, and it's particularly important that an individual community control that history and define themselves. And history is an important way of doing that. And by um, saving, preserving, making available the variety of things we have here, whether it's uh, from a famous person like the collection of Michael Callan that we have here, or whether it's uh, somebody that nobody ever heard of but happened to write a diary, for example, in 1920, uh, as we have here. It gives that sense of history and that sense of self that all communities need, and certainly uh, the LGBT community needs very much because historically one of the primary uh, ways of keeping us down was, was the idea that we didn't exist or, you know, we were the only person in the whole world that fe felt this way. So even the snapshots that we have from Fire Island, for example, um, clearly say that isn't true. We've been here a long while, we continue to be here, and we're an important uh, community for ourselves and for the, for the nation and the world as a whole. Hi, my name is Cheryl Boyce-Taylor and I'm a poet. Currently, I'm teaching writing at the center. My class is called Breaking Sky Poetry Work. The class is designed for anyone who's interested in exploring poetry as a mode of self-expression. Um, we have beginning writers in the class, as well as more seasoned writers. One of the things I also do in the class is that I'm exploring with the class the works of contemporary gay and lesbian writers. We're looking at how they make up their poems, what going into them, what uh, struggles or significant events take place in the poem, and how are those events resolved. Um, it is interesting to see the class blossom and grow. Um, I use dream fragments, memory fragments, music, sound, uh, visuals. I use uh, curry and ginger and all of these things to stimulate all of the senses to have people write. I became involved with um, the center uh, through In Our Own Right writing series. And it was really crucial and important for me to have a place where I could write my poetry and share myself as a whole woman, as a Caribbean woman, as a lesbian, as a mother, and to have some place to present my work where it was judged just on the quality and the stories that I brought to the audiences. In Our Own Right gives young writers or new writers a safe environment and a safe place to bring their work and to grow with their work. My name is Manohar Kanuri. Um, I signed up with uh, the center and started volunteering with In Our Own Right uh, sometime earlier this, uh, this year uh, in the summer. One of the big things we have on our agenda is the Queer Book of the Month Club, which we hope to launch in January of 2000. Three. That's two months away. And uh, we want to make this a national thing, a high profile um, event, and we'll have a book of every month, for, I mean, for each month, pretty much like the Oprah thing. As far as um, the, the regular readings are concerned, we're trying to see if we can mix it up a little bit and, and um, have some of the authors come in and, and uh, work with Cheryl, uh, who, who spoke earlier, uh, and uh, maybe 
participate in the writing workshops. Uh, and that's, that's something we're exploring. I'm George Town, and I'm a painter and printmaker. And I have a, uh, my first one-person exhibition on display here at the center. The title of the, the exhibition is called Full Frontal. And it's an exhibition of portraits of openly gay men. Uh, many of the gay men are friends of mine, uh, and some of them are people that are somewhat recognizable in the community. I've been very impressed with the renovations and the, uh, uh, how fantastic this place looks uh, uh, since they've reopened. And uh, to, to be able to have a, an exhibition that I've been working on for so long uh, to be here. Uh, it, a lot of the paintings in this show uh, are the culmination of about three or four years worth of work and to have my first one-person exhibition here was uh, meant a lot to me. My name is David Chase. I'm the volunteer co-chair of the library committee at the community center here. I've been a volunteer with the library for eight years now. I've been co-chair of the library for just under four years. The library serves uh, approximately 500 people a month. Not necessarily that many people check out books, but about that many people come through our doors. We have a computer system, which is how I first became a volunteer. I uh, stomped by one evening to do some research and uh, thought it seemed like a fun place, so I asked the people working there, do you ever need extra volunteers? And they said, oh, sure. And they asked me where I worked, and I said IBM, and they said, oh, we're just starting to computerize the library. Maybe you'd like to help with that. And little did I know that it would turn into almost a second career. Um, I started off just doing data entry with several other volunteers of taking the information from all of our books and typing it into a program which was uh, sent away to a library processing center, and they sent back to us uh, data in a format that would be imported into the computer to be used for our card catalog. And then over time, I became in charge of, of the computers. We uh, finally finished the process of entering all the data uh, into the computers and brought our, our card catalog online within the library. So when patrons could come into the library, we could search for things by title or author or subject. And we started checking books in and out electronically instead of on the paper cards that we had been using. And uh, just earlier this year, we upgraded our computer system software uh, to the newer release of the system and we're able to now uh, have our entire catalog served to the World Wide Web. So anybody can go to www.gaycenter.org and follow the links to the library catalog and you'll be able to search a live search. You'll be able to see if a book is in or out, available, and again do the searching on the, on the subject, the title, the author, etc. The collection is over 12,000 volumes of books and videos. Um, actually, we have just slightly over 500 videos, which people can take out for a week. We don't rent them. You just leave a deposit, but it's, it's a lending library, so you get your deposit back. And uh, the, uh, I would say that of those 12,000 titles, I think over 10,000 of them are unique titles. We have duplicate copies of, the, of many as we can to protect against uh, damage or, or loss. But uh, pretty much, we're, we're a very large uh, lending library, and certainly the um, biggest one that we know of in the eastern half of the U.S. I'm Lisa Lipkin. I'm a co-chair for Lesbian Cinema Arts. This is my co-chair, Dorothy Leung. We have Mariana Garcia, our videographer. We have Juana, our video engineer. We have Kate Fitzgerald, our in-house filmmaker, writer, creator, editor, whatever, everything. <laughs> we have Stacy Shaw, our entertainer. She does all kinds of entertainment, a lot of entertainment. And Meryl Kafka is our marketing distribution consultant. <laughs> um, but what we're really all about is that, uh, first of all, you can see we're a very diverse group, and we feel very strongly about bringing culture to the community that really multicultural experiences in lesbian cinema arts to the lesbian community. So we have a lot of different genres that we show. We show short film, we show documentary, we show full feature film in uh, f foreign film. What else do we do here? Films. Independent films. We invite works in, progress. works in progress. We have filmmakers come and discuss their work. Sometimes they bring their producers. Sometimes actors come with, with them. And um, we have a wonderful time. The filmmakers appreciate this forum to have an opportunity to speak to the audience, 
get feedback on how they feel the film has impacted on them, whether they like it, they don't like it, and uh, we feel that this is something that uh, is important for our community. And all the women that are here have put in a tremendous amount of hours on a monthly basis to make sure that it comes out right. And uh, we're very proud of our, our committee members. I'm a filmmaker, and I came to this program because they, uh, Dorothy and Lisa chose my film to screen. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. As, as Dorothy said, it, it gave me a great opportunity to get feedback on my film, and it was very well received. And, <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's it was a good film. and it's been in a bunch of film festivals since then, but this was my kickoff, and I'm really appreciative of that. The Heart of the Center Award, award we won, and uh, that really was uh, very <laughs> special to us, very, very special to us. My name is Wolfgang Busch, and I'm the director of the How Do I Look Project. How Do I Look is a documentary about HIV AIDS awareness, artistic empowerment, and also we're dealing with issues such as transgender, alternative lifestyle, fashion, dance, drug and sex education. We have received sponsorship and support from community-based organizations such as the LGBT Community Center, Latino Commission on AIDS, LifeBeat, out professionals and politicians such as the Manhattan Borough Presidency Virginia Fields and Senator David Patterson. The intergenerational, multicultural, diverse and artistic ballroom community came together in the year 2000 to promote natural artistic progression. Our mission is to gain respect for our contributions to society, to break down stereotyping, discrimination and racism, to empower and educate ourselves artistically using the visual media as a tool. Because of the center support, many black and Hispanic ballroom members became aware of the LGBT community center. How Do I Look became an outreach tool for the center and brought in a community that wouldn't come there otherwise. The Department of Cultural Programs has been successful in providing a wide array of thought-provoking as well as socially conscious programs for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities. Acknowledging our community's cultural diversity through the presentation of a wide array of events helps the center achieve recognition as an institution that nurtures emerging artists and supports our broad cultural heritage. As conservative, political, corporate, and religious forces succeed in homogenizing mainstream American culture, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community is committed to expanding our community's appreciation of a broad range of contemporary artistic expression by enhancing creativity, stimulating thought-provoking discussion, and bridging cultures. As our name demonstrates, the complexity of New York City's lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community continues to expand. As such, the Center's Department of Cultural Programs must look toward the future prepared to meet the needs and demands of an ever-increasing diverse population. The Center serves as a meeting and social space for our community to reflect on all aspects of contemporary culture. Visual arts and cultural expression often serve as the basis of discussion about social, political, and sexual issues. Our commitment to cultural and artistic expression as a tool to further the center's political advocacy and social justice initiatives remains central to our mission. Some of the things that I'm most proud of that we've accomplished here at the center is our implementation of the branding initiative. The cultural programs department has utilized the brand that Future Brand employed or designed two years ago, probably in the most cohesive manner in a more cohesive manner than other departments. Um, we have sub-branded so that every single program is identified with a color, a look, a place setting. Um, we've done some wonderful work and collaborative projects with the New School. We've done some work with Lincoln Center. We've done some work with the Visual AIDS Project. We continue our relationship with the New York Times, uh, sponsoring the Broadway Divas as Gay Icon series. Uh, we've implemented new, some new programming, in particular JUICE, which is a outreach and advocacy program for the sober community. We realize that there are any number of 12-step programs that go on in this building on any given day. 
and there often, there often are not opportunities for this community to socialize outside of bars. We are implementing a transgender movie night, which will begin in February. And this is an effort to get programming for the trans community outside the clinical setting. Um, we, as, we, as we changed our name, we need to make sure that that community gets represented in our overall programming. And one of the things that I'm, I'm actually particularly pleased about is our, our seasonal prospectus. Um, we've been talking about this for some time, but we need to employ a method of advertising our programs well in advance. Um, and I guess the best way to describe it is the learning annex model. We really want to be able to have people reach out and do everything from basket weaving to dance classes to art classes to English as a second language um, and provide a, a full spectrum of non-traditional programming to the queer community. We know that people want to do things in this building and, um, and so I'm really proud of that. The other things that I'm particularly pleased about is certainly is our, our collaborative relationship that we did with the Tosos Theatre Company. We did six months of staged readings, um, all very successful. Um, we've increased our advertising around our own programming, um, in particular um, advertising our, our orientation program in the Village Voice, which we see an immediate result in the number of people attending um, the orientation because we're, we're going outside the traditional venues that queer people look to for uh, queer programming. The next couple of things that we look forward to are a, a, a program called Seven Plays in Seven Days. It's new, Afri new works by African American playwrights which will launch in June, excuse me, not in June, in February, in honor of Black History Month, we will do a lesbian, a national search for a lesbian art exhibit that will take place in March. We will do a lesbian short film festival in April. Um, we have brought on board a, certainly our Queer Book of the Month Club is, is, is about to launch in January and that's probably one of the most exciting things that we'll be doing throughout the year. Modeled much like Oprah's Book of the Month Club, we will feature a new work each month by a queer person and that information will be distributed through, um, through the community centers or the National Association of Community Centers. It'll certainly be on our website. And then from our new David Bonet Cyber Center, we will feature a online book discussion group once a month with the author. So hopefully come January, the press will be talking about the center's Queer Book of the Month Club. And if it gets half the recognition or a fraction of the recognition as Ms. Oprah, we'll be well on our way. So I hope you have a better understanding of what the Department of Cultural Programs is and the people that um, I work with.